Hi, this is Stacia, and we're going to have a look at a testing line of the King's Gambit called the Fisher Defense, uh, named after Bobby Fisher himself, um, who, interestingly enough, published an article um, that called this move D6 the reputation to the King's Gambit. <laughs> so, Although it is a testing line, it's hard to call this a reputation. There were ideas found um, to play for white that are it's okay still. But um, it's very interesting. So the idea behind d6 is twofold. It opens up the light square bishop, but it also controls the e5 square so that the knight can't easily happen to e5. But how do we get here? Let's have a look. And what we're going to do, as usual for my opening videos, is we're going to follow the main line of this and look at the ideas behind the moves um, and hopefully learn something along the way. So okay, e4, e5, and f4. This is the king's gambit. And black takes it. This is the most testing move, is to accept the gambit. And now we play knight f3. So this is called the king's knight gambit. Also possible to play bishop to c4. That would be called the bishop's, um, king's bishop's gambit. So here black has a lot of responses and the main line is to play g5 straight away and hold on to the pawn. But we're going to do the Fisher defense, which, oh, I'm sorry, knight here. And the Fisher defense is d6, as we mentioned. So black throws this move in to take away the e5 square, open up the light square bishop. And now they're intending g5. So white gets an extra tempo here and continues with the plan of d4, taking, creating a strong central duo and opening up the bishop on the f-pawn. Notice that when black takes on f4, they give up control of this d4 square. This is a desirable move that white gets in. And now g5. So black is saying, you gave me a pawn, and I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to get to an end game where I'm a pawn up, and I'm going to win. <laughs> so uh, white is going to say, I have a stronger center and better development, and I'm going to crush you, or I'm going to win the pawn back with advantage. So these are the main ideas, and this really is quite a battle. Um, so here after g5, white plays a common theme in the king's gambit, which is the move h4. So the idea is to undermine this pawn chain on the king's side. Notice that black can't do this to fortify because there is a pin and this will lose the game. And f6 is just a bit of a weak move. Um, it takes the square away from the queen and the knight. And um, I think it kind of wastes a tempo in a way. So if white just wants to further develop here, I think white will be fine. Like computer gives like knight c3, if bishop g7, just continue development. And in this line, it says there's a slight plus for white. So I think for that reason, um, black plays g4, another common idea. And a common response to this is to usually jump the knight forward and sacrifice on f7 potentially. But the problem here is this d6 pawn is pesky. We can't go to e5. And if the knight jumps into g4, well, f6 now is a problem because 
I don't see a retreat square for the knight. <laughs> Do you? I think the knight is trapped and will be lost. So, the knight can't go forward in that case. So, white has to play this kind of sad move, knight g1. <laughs> it does come with a threat, however, threatening to take on f4. This would win the pawn back. Um, so, the main line here is a move that I haven't seen yet before. And that's the move bishop h6 kind of an awkward move because the bishop is blocking the the h pawn which probably prefers to be mobile uh, but it it's simply you know defending this pawn that's what's happening here and now white is going to redevelop the knight <laughs> knight to e2 so attacking the pawn again there are two attackers on the pawn so black can play queen f6 now so again, just simply defending. This also develops the queen. But I have to say, black's position looks really awkward to me to be blocking the, the F pawn and the H pawn in this way, to be taking squares away from the knight. The knight's gonna have to come this way, I guess. It just looks awkward. Queen side development is lacking although white doesn't really have it either. So white aims to, to fix that. They play knight b to c3 with this really nice threat of knight d5, forking everything, um, forking the c7 square, which is a fork, hitting the queen with tempo, and this would win the f-pawn because it would add a third attacker and the queen would have to move. So computer actually says you can play f3 here as black, and maybe that's better, but the most common move was actually c6, just defending. So okay, there's no knight to d5 anymore. And now comes an interesting move. And I'm showing this to be the 100% book line theory, which is not a move I would, uh, I don't think I would take this move seriously in a game. And it's the move G3. This is a pawn break. You're moving a pawn on the king side, but it's an interesting move because this does attack the F pawn. So black has to respond to this. And I actually, I think the most testing response is f3, um, but this is actually not theory. Um, so there must be something wrong with this, and we'll take a look to see if there is. Um, f takes g3 is played 100% of the time, so let's look at this. This looks really scary to me, but it does give up the f4 square for the knight. And um, let's say black just develops here, knight d7. We can play bishop e3, and let's say black just develops some more. Just seems logical to me. Queen d2, and now white is getting some play here because there's pressure on the bishop. The bishop and the queen are awkward. Basically, black's entire setup is really awkward, and there's no way to profit from this right away. And in fact, I'll probably blockade with the king. And position, the computer says, is slightly better for white. I think this position's crazy. Um, it looks hard to play from both sides, but maybe a little bit better for white because of king f2 and the awkward placement of the black pieces. So, but that being said, if anyone has more insight into this type of position. I'd love to hear it because I don't, I'm just guessing on this one. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. So it seems to me F3 is not as good as taking and I can't tell you exactly why. 
but this allows knight takes g3. And Black's idea here, again, kind of a strange move, but it's the 100% book line. Black is going to take on c1. I think the idea there is to play h5 and support the pawn on g4. Um, again, if black just develops like knight d7, then white will take here. And the thing is, the most natural looking move to me is knight takes bishop, but this is an awkward move again. So the knight is blocking the h-pawn again, and it doesn't have any prospects. This square is occupied. This square is guarded. This square is occupied. So the knight is stuck on the in one of the worst possible areas on the board. <laughs> Just on the edge, nowhere to move. It's not doing anything except blocking the um, h-pawn, so this is not desirable. So queen could be played. But now this would allow knight f5 with tempo. And in fact, white's better here. So I think this is the reason these lines aren't so good. So this is the reason uh, black takes here. Kind of a sad move to play, but it does trade a piece off and allows the move h5 to come soon. Black will play knight e7 soon, or knight e7 first. Oh, I'm sorry, knight e7, not this one. This knight comes to e7. So this knight actually has like some prospects now. You know, it can come to g6, to f4 maybe. Maybe the queen's coming to f4. And h5 is an idea for black. So this is a better, a better plan for black. And then, um, yeah, at this point, there was really only like one game. <laughs> but I like to just, I just wanted to look at one last move, which... Queen d2 was played, I think, to stop queen f4, and then h5. And I will stop here because this is move 12, so that's, I usually just go to move 10, but this is such a rich position, I couldn't really help myself. <laughs> so move 12 is h5, and um, we'll just analyze this position for a second. It looks kind of crazy to me, like anything can happen, um, but perhaps a typical King's Gambit position. So black is up a pawn. The pawn is this g4 pawn, which is a pass pawn, although it is currently blockaded by this knight. White does have more development and a bigger center. So the pawn duo has persisted so far. White has a knight, a queen, and a knight developed Black has a knight and a queen developed. So it seems to me white is ahead in development. Although I have to say the queen's a bit pesky here because maybe white would like to um, just move the bishop and castle, but the queen's preventing that. So white does have an issue to solve there. Knight f5 might be a future move, although maybe it's better to keep the pawn blockaded. And yeah, um, probably bishop c4 is a move. And then white's mobile pawn center is something to watch for. Black is going to try to um, just develop and then have an extra pawn. But it seems to me um, this is just an interesting position with chances for both sides. All right, and now we will review the line quickly. So it goes e4, <laughs> d4. I, you can tell I'm a d4 player because like I automatically did that without even thinking. Okay. So this is king's gambit. Black accepts the pawn. Knight f3, the king's knight gambit, and d6, our star move of, of the video. The fisher defense, only now intending g5. d4 is played, creating the pawn center, attacking the f pawn. And now black defends with g5, holding onto the pawn. White undermines with h4. Black pushes past. 
attacking the knight with tempo. White has to play the rather sad move, knight to g1, but creates again a threat on the f-pawn. Bishop h6, an awkward but purposeful move, guarding the pawn. Knight e2, getting the knight back in the action and attacking again. The queen defends again. Awkward setup for black. I'm not a fan of this, but black often will make concessions to hold on to the pawn. Knight b to c3, huge threat on d5. Black stops it with c6. And now the very strange and mysterious pawn break g3, which probably to stronger players than myself, this probably looks really normal. <laughs> but this is my uh, this is why I like to do these videos. This is an idea that is um, quite strong for white, and not one that I would find on my own. Black could take or black could push here, but it's it looks like it's not. Um, a move any grandmasters would play, they would take here. Knight here. The knight is now blockading the g-pawn. Black rids themselves of the awkward bishop. Rook takes c1. And now the knight comes to e7, a way better path than from h6. Queen d2, stopping queen f4. and now h5. And that is our final move where we have an interesting game where it is a gambit where white's down a pawn but up in development and center control. And black has this g pawn but it's currently blockaded. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. I feel like I certainly did. Um, if you have any comments to add um, to what's going on in this line. That'd be greatly appreciated, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.